we be excited about what matters to us. And so the question that we're asking in this series is, is the gospel something that you are reposting in your life? Is it something that you're sharing with other people? Are you sharing your faith? Are you evangelizing to those who don't know or don't follow Jesus? I know when I was in high school, I, I can remember my first time that I shared the gospel with someone, when I got to share my faith with someone. And it was with a friend that I had from high school who was a year older than me. And he uh, was uh, a senior when I was a junior, and so then my senior year, it was his freshman year at college. And so we met together when he came home for winter break. And I can remember talking and asking about how things were going at college. He went to Ohio University, and he was telling me about all his classes and the people that he'd met and the things that he's done. And at first, it started with all these really positive, exciting things, but it quickly downsized into these all these feelings of feeling depressed or empty and like life was without direction, right? Like he had spent most of his first semester putting all his energy going crazy with, with partying and doing the things that he wanted to do and came out feeling worse than he did at the beginning of the semester. See, he had thought that the freedom of doing whatever he wanted would bring him happiness, but it ended up failing him, right? And so... As we're talking about this, I, I feel this, this nudge inside that, man, I really should start talking about what I believe and what, what, uh, how following Jesus has given me peace and direction with my life. But I was terrified. Right? I, I didn't want to do it because it was scary. Right? Like, What if they felt judged by me sharing Jesus with them and, and saying that you know, maybe the way that you're living isn't the right way to live? What if... They got angry, and I made things worse, and made not only their life that they're struggling with worse, but also our friendship worse. What if they realize that I don't have all the answers, and I don't have everything all together, and so maybe they think I don't know what I'm talking about? See, I was a new Christian myself. I'd only started Jesus, following Jesus a, a year or so before that. And so I was scared to be able to share my faith with this person, even though I felt this nudging to do so. But it kept, the Holy Spirit just kept pushing and pushing and pushing until I felt so uncomfortable about not doing it that I gave in. And so to try and have a cop out, I said, uh, dude, like, I, I, I'm sorry that you're going through all this. Can I, can I just pray for you real quick? Like, I didn't want to share my faith. I just wanted to, like, try and pray for him and be done with it. So I pray for him, and, and it goes, you know, fairly well. But it afforded me this opportunity to then have him start asking me some questions about why I follow Jesus. And I got to share about the peace that following Jesus has given to me. Right? He, he, uh, we finished the conversation. He thanked me for, for sharing this with him. For He recognized that I was going outside of my comfort zone and that I cared enough about him to be able to share this stuff with him. But this was actually the last time that I saw him. I didn't hang out with him really after this. It wasn't because we like hated each other or anything like that, but just our lives went in different directions. And so many times I've asked myself, did I make the right decision? Was it worth it? Should I have shared my faith or should I have listened to the reasons I was telling myself not to share? Evangelism has always been one of those weird concepts that just makes Christians feel uneasy, right? Like, if we talk about following Jesus, right, you're, you're game for it. If we talk about reading your Bible, like, I'll do my best, I'll make it happen, right? Turn your life around. I will do what I can to try and change the way that I'm living. Live a life that's full of following the Holy Spirit. I, that's the plan. I'll do it, right? But tell someone else about following Jesus. Mm, that makes me uncomfortable. I don't know about that. I'm not sure if I'm equipped for that. I don't think I'm the right person for that. Maybe somebody else should do it instead of me, right? We, we tell ourselves these sort of excuses all the time about reasons we shouldn't share our faith with other people. But actually, I think we need to admit that the idea of sharing our faith with someone else, especially someone who we already know, can be difficult to do. In fact, I think it's a lot easier to talk ourselves out of sharing our faith instead of talking ourselves into sharing our faith with someone else. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Why not share our faith with others? 
right? We, we, how we convince ourselves to not share our faith and why those reasons tend to fall apart. Now, there are all kinds of reasons that we tell ourselves why we shouldn't share our faith. Here's a few of them that stick out to me as common. The first one is fear. Fear. See, the, the idea of sharing our faith with someone else can be scary. And it can be scary for a bunch of different reasons. Maybe, for you, you might be afraid that you're going to say the wrong thing, and that the moment you start talking about Jesus, your friends are going to uh, stop wanting to hang out with you because you're that guy that wants to talk about Jesus all the time, even though you only brought it up once. Right? Or maybe you're afraid that your friend will actually want to know more about Jesus, and they'll start asking you questions that you don't know the answers to. And so you will start to look foolish. For me, and I know that this sounds a little bit ridiculous, but I get worried that I'm, if I say the wrong thing, that the people that I talk to and that I share my faith with will get the wrong idea about Jesus, and they'll misunderstand him. And that would mean that they don't actually believe in the real Jesus, right? And if they don't believe in the real Jesus, then that means ultimately that they're going to hell, right? And so I convince myself in my head, well, I don't want people to go to hell, so I'm not going to tell them about Jesus, right? It's this, this messed up logic that we get in our heads to convince ourselves that we shouldn't share our faith. But it's not logical, right? All we're afraid of is just going outside of our comfort zone. So we get scared. It's, it's scary to share our faith. The second reason I think we avoid sharing our faith is this idea that all truth is valid. See, when I was growing up, I had a number of friends and classmates that were Muslim or Buddhist or Jewish or atheist, agnostic, whatever. I had people that I knew from a wide spectrum of different religious backgrounds. And I remember having this really heavy feeling that Sure, I believe in Jesus, and that is my truth, but somehow their truth could be different for them. And I didn't want to come across to someone saying that my truth is somehow better than their truth. See, we're, we're taught by our culture that your truth is true for you, and whoever believes in that, that's true for them. But we can't disagree when someone says that this is true for me, which leads to the last reason I think we avoid sharing our faith, which is evangelism feels judgmental. Evangelism feels judgmental. Here's how this one works out in my mind. In order to follow Jesus, I've had to wrestle with the own things that I've done in my life that are wrong, the things that we call sin, right? The things that we're not proud of, the things that we've disobeyed and rebelled against God. We have to wrestle with our own sin to follow Jesus. And if I'm sharing Jesus with someone, it's because they don't believe in him yet, right? And if someone doesn't believe in Jesus, then they're sinful too, just as much as followers of Jesus are sinful. And so, at minimum, if someone doesn't believe in Jesus, they might already have, uh, they might already believe in something or a different religion, and if I tell them about Jesus, I'm basically telling them they're wrong about that, right? So, in essence, I feel this burden like, I'm, by sharing my faith in Jesus with someone, I'm actually being super judgmental towards them. I'm basically saying, your life is so bad and messed up that you need Jesus. And, and that feels judgmental. That feels wrong, right? So these reasons that we have up here, these three ideas are common ones, but there's lots of different reasons that we can give ourselves to talk ourselves out of not sharing our faith, right? And it's easy to do that. It's easy to talk ourselves out of doing this. So what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do with these concerns? Right? A really good place to go with these is to start looking at those concerns and trying to evaluate them and see if those reasons actually hold up. So let's take a deeper look at these reasons that we just talked about and see whether they actually hold up. Well, the first one is fear. And the idea I want to communicate here is that fear can be conquered. Right? Like, nobody's saying that sharing your faith is easy and it shouldn't be scary. It's scary. It's uncomfortable. That's just the way it is, right? But instead, I don't think the problem is being afraid of it. I think the problem is that when we're afraid, it results in us not sharing our faith. 
See, in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus talks to his disciples uh, the last time before he leaves earth to go to heaven. And he's about to tell them that they should go and they should make disciples of all people around the world. And the entire time, this is happening after his resurrection. And I want, to see, I want you to see what happens in this passage here. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. But some doubted, right? Like keep in mind who these people are. These are the people that followed Jesus for years, watching his miracles, watching his teachings. They're literally about to share their faith with thousands and thousands of people and turn the world upside down. And they watched Jesus get crucified. They watched him come back to life and be resurrected and be standing in front of him, in front of them, giving directions to go and make disciples. Yet they still doubt. They doubt it, right? Everybody doubts. But the reality is that long term, they didn't let their fear, they didn't let their doubt stop them from doing what Jesus commanded them to do. They didn't let that stop them. Uh, you may be familiar with a, uh, a famous South African civil rights activist and politician named Nelson Mandela. He said something like this once. I learned that courage was not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. What if we treated our, faith, our fear the same way? Like, what if... Instead of seeing it as a reason to quit, we saw it as something to be conquered. Right? No one is saying that fear is invalid or you should ignore it or that it's just an excuse. But if you're feeling fear around the idea of sharing your faith with others, you're not alone. Probably every person in this room feels fear about sharing their faith. In fact, the, the Bible is filled with stories of people who felt afraid to do things that God was calling them to do, things that were significant. And they did these things despite their fear. And the same God that empowered them to do these things, the same God that empowered the disciples to share their faith with thousands and change the world, is the same God that lives inside of you right now. So you are capable of conquering and overcoming that fear so that you can share your faith with others. Well, going to that second excuse, that second reason we avoid sharing our faith with the idea of all truth is valid, the reality is that all truth can't be valid. See, truth is a weird concept. It's a weird idea. If you ask three people to describe this guy, if you ask three people to describe it, then there's a really good chance that you get three different descriptions. Like, this guy's wearing a blue hat. Or another person might say that this guy is tall. Or another person might say this guy is smiling, right? And all three of these things are true. But the problem comes when people say three things that can't be true at the same time. Like, maybe one person might say that this person has red hair. Another says this person has brown hair. Another person says this guy has purple hair, right? Not all three of these things can be true at the same time. And that second situation is more like what we find ourselves in when it comes to sharing our faith in Christ as followers of Jesus. See, Jesus says some pretty specific things in the Bible about who he is, and it makes, us makes it difficult for us to say that my truth is just as valid as your truth, especially if both can't be true at the same time. See, here's an example of something that Jesus said that is pretty, uh, pretty specific. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's a pretty exclusive statement. Jesus told us that he is literally the only way to know and follow God. The only way. And I think the real question that we need to ask ourselves is not, is truth, all truth valid? But instead, we need to ask ourselves the question, do we actually believe what Jesus said? Do we actually believe what Jesus said? And if we do then suddenly the idea of sharing our faith is more like helping others to see what is true. 
And I think this is the perfect transition into that last excuse, that last reason we convince ourselves not to share our faith. Because I think that we can help others see what is true without being judgmental. See, evangelism feels judgmental, but it's actually loving. Okay, I, I get that this is one is tough. This one's tough to wrestle with. Evangelism is, uh, feels, feels judgmental, and it's hard to get around that feeling. Because Jesus literally told us that he came to seek and to save the lost. And if that's true, then a big part of evangelism is telling other people that they are, in fact, lost. Right? And even though it feels judgmental to do that, it's our responsibility as followers of Jesus. He's given us the responsibility of sharing our faith, of helping others to recognize the truth of who he is. And if you're like me in this reason, this is a reason that you have used to talk yourself out of sharing your faith, I'd like you to consider viewing this a little differently. Right? And instead of seeing this as someone who, loved, uh, someone who loves Jesus looking down on people who don't know him, try thinking of this as a journey of knowing God. And those who follow Jesus, those who know God, are farther down that journey than those who don't. And instead of being judgmental, when we share our faith, we're actually inviting people to walk beside us on this journey. We're inviting people to join us farther down the road to be able to see the path and see it clearly, right? I've been where you're on at this journey, and I want you to see all the incredible things that I've experienced. So come alongside me, see what it's like. And suddenly what we used to see as judgmental is now excitement and hope for what this person will ultimately experience. Okay, so we've looked at a bunch of reasons for why we might not want to share our faith with others. And if we're being honest with ourselves, we'll see that those reasons really don't hold up. But why then are we still so hesitant to share our faith with other people? I think I can go out on a limb here and say that it's really a us versus them problem, right? Like, we're here, and they're there, right? Like, and if we're here, and they are there, things are pretty comfortable. And for a lot of us, going from here to there is also pretty easy. But things can get really messy when they go from there to here. Now, what do the people from here, meaning us, what do we do to help the people from there, meaning the people who don't know, who don't follow Jesus, what do we do to help them feel more at home here? How are we helping those who don't know, who don't follow, who don't love Jesus to feel like they belong when they're at gathering? when they're at redemption, when they're in church, how do we help them know that they belong here, that they're welcome here, and that we are all on a journey growing in our faith of knowing God? So whether they're at this point or they're at this point, they are welcome here. How do we foster that environment? Well, I think that there's a lot that we can do. And you guys will be talking about this at your tables in just a few minutes, but I want to give you a few small steps that I think every person in this room can take. The first one is to keep chasing after Jesus yourself. Keep chasing after Jesus yourself. There's an old saying that goes something like, you can't lead anyone else further than you've gone yourself. See, the truth is that it is virtually impossible to invite someone to grow in their relationship with God if you're not doing the same thing. If you're not making following Jesus and growing in your faith a priority in your own life, it is going to be incredibly difficult, if not impossible, for you to evangelize and share your faith. So if you truly want to share your faith with others, whatever you do, don't neglect your own relationship with Jesus. The second thing I think you can do is be able to share what Jesus is doing in your life. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. 
See, the best way for us to tell someone about what we believe and why we follow Jesus is to tell them about how we have experienced God firsthand. How we have experienced Jesus working in our lives personally. And my advice here is that you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to feel like you have it all together, but instead, you need to be honest about how you have personally experienced God working in your life, what he's done in your life, what he's doing in your life currently. Share those things with people. Be genuine about those things. The last uh, step I have for you is to pray for people who aren't here yet. And this one is honestly more difficult than it sounds. Right? Praying for people who aren't here yet is a great way to keep our hearts and our minds open to the idea that God is working in the lives both inside and outside of this room. And one of the things that we believe here is that God is a miracle worker, and a miracle worker who listens when we pray to him. So if we really believe that, then what greater miracle is there than someone believing in Jesus for the first time? So are you praying for your friends who don't know Jesus? Are you praying for your family members who don't know Jesus? Are you praying for your teachers and your coaches and your classmates and all these different people that are in your life who don't know, who don't follow Jesus yet? Because God is capable of working in their life. He's capable of transforming their hearts. He's capable of taking the most strong atheist and making him a devout follower of him. God is capable. You know, it was never Jesus' plan for this group to stay the exact same that it is right now. It was never God's plan that the people that are in this room are the same people that will always be in this room every Sunday. It's clear throughout Scripture that Jesus fully intended for believers to change the world and to share their faith with others so that others can come to know Jesus and follow Jesus and grow in their faith too. But the truth is that if you're looking for an excuse not to share your faith, you'll probably find one. You can convince yourself of a lot of things, including this. And so if you are trying to look for an out, you will find it. But if you're ready to look past those excuses, if you're ready to go in, if you're ready to share your faith, I think you'll find that sharing our faith is one of the greatest ways that we can see God at work in and around our lives. So before we go to our tables to discuss this, I want to leave you with Jesus' final words to his disciples that he shared right before he went to heaven. And again, remember that he knew the whole time that some of them doubted, that some of them were afraid, but he trusted them. He gave them this commission anyways. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you to the end of the age. Now that's something. That's something worth sharing. That's something worth spending our time on. That's something worth being excited about and communicating with others. So take some time to discuss this at your tables, but first let me pray for you. Father, I'm so thankful for this group, this uh, group of students who desire to know you, to follow you, to worship you. Lord, I pray that you would help us to grow in our faith by the way that we share it. Help us to recognize that the lies that we're believing about why we shouldn't evangelize are all lies. They're all excuses. They're all reasons we're just convincing ourselves to do some, to not do something. So help us to have the courage. Help us to have the patience, help us to have the love and compassion to be able to share our faith with people. And we pray that you would be working in the lives of people that they share with. Pray that you'd be working in the lives of the students to be able to help them to share their faith, give them the courage and the words to do so. Lord, we need your help in this because if we're doing this on our own, it won't go well. We need you to work in the hearts of people to be able to help them to see the truth of who you are. That you are the only way that Jesus is the only way to be able to be saved. So we pray all this in his mighty name.